And the final level of this exercise is your biggest takeaway for today. This is where things get really interesting. <laughs> What's up YouTube community, Bernd here, welcome back to another video lesson. Today I prepared something really special for you. We will check out the most important and most powerful exercise we have looked at on this channel so far concerning fretboard visualization, improvisation and writing and arranging guitar solos in general. So make sure to smash the like button if you're as excited about this as I am. Let's not waste any more time and start right away. The reason why we discussed the topic of improvisation today is because you guys and girls voted for it on patreon.com slash Bernd. In case you didn't know, my patrons get to vote on the lesson topics that I'm featuring on here. So today's incredibly important exercise is all about breaking free from constantly playing the same scale boxes in the same positions on the fretboard. After watching this one until the end, it will be very easy for you to locate the correct note you can play over each chord in a key and you will be able to come up with some really amazing arpeggio sections for your songs and improvised takes without learning tons of new different shapes. Our foundation for the day is a super easy riff in B-flat minor. Let's have a listen. So for this one I was just playing ascending single notes in the key of B-flat minor. B flat on the first fret of the A string, C on the third fret, D flat on the fourth fret, and E flat on the sixth fret. And I was just playing palm muted 16th notes to accent the double bass drumming accordingly. So far so good, so that is the basic foundation that we will play over today. So the most common cliche, especially when it comes to rock and metal music, would be thinking, well, those are the first four notes of the B flat minor scale. So I will just use this scale in one or two positions and work with some of my favorite shred licks at the moment. Here's how that could sound like. So that doesn't sound too bad, but it's also not that interesting. The most important takeaway right here, right from the beginning, is not just seeing those single notes. You want to think about each chord that you would actually play on these scale degrees. So when we take a quick look at the chords in the key of B flat minor, we see that we have the B flat minor chord on the first scale degree, of course. We have the C diminished chord on the second scale degree, which is a really interesting and dissonant sound right away. So we really want to make sure to accent that in our improvised solo. We have the D flat major chord on the third scale degree and the E flat minor chord on the fourth scale degree. So once again, instead of just seeing those single notes in the riff, B flat, C, D flat and E flat, I'm actually thinking about what kind of chords that would be in this specific key if those were my root notes. In order to do that, I would just add the third and fifth to each root note, only working with the notes that I can find in this scale. So once again, for today's basic riff, I would end up with the chords B flat minor, C diminished, D flat major and E flat minor. So right away, I don't just want to limit myself to thinking in the B flat minor scale when I'm improvising over this riff. I want to play some really cool arpeggios over all those single notes. That way, by thinking in chords and arpeggios right here, I can bring out this really cool ascending sound of this cadence that you don't really hear with the riff since those are just single notes. But how do you do that without spending tons of hours learning different minor, major, augmented and diminished arpeggio shapes all across the neck? Here's the exercise that I want you to practice concerning that. This one will hopefully open your eyes to see how easy this actually is.
As always, you can download the tabs, get the profiles and practice backing tracks for this exercise and for all of my YouTube lessons on patreon.com slash Bernd. That is also the place where you can get some personal feedback, coaching and practice plan advice from me in case you need further assistance with certain exercises. So let's check out what this exercise is about in detail and why it is so important and powerful. So I'm seeing the single notes of the riff as the root notes of the arpeggios and I started out with playing triad arpeggios. So for the B flat minor chord, I want to play a B flat minor arpeggio. For the C diminished chord, I want to play a C diminished arpeggio and so on. So to get started, I was just visualizing the root notes of the chords, B flat, C, D flat, and E flat. And I was switching to playing E flat on the sixth fret on the low E string instead of the first fret on the A string since that gives me more options concerning the fingering. And after that I was simply adding the thirds and the fifths to those roots, the minor third and the perfect fifth for the minor arpeggios, the major third and perfect fifth for the major arpeggio and the minor third and the flattened fifth for the diminished arpeggio. So I was playing the root, the minor third, perfect fifth for the B flat minor chord, root, minor third, flattened or diminished fifth for the C diminished chord, root, major third, perfect fifth for the D flat major chord and root, minor third, perfect fifth for the E flat minor chord. So by just doing this simple thing I can immediately hear the sound of the cadence because I'm adding the thirds and the fifths to those roots that I'm hearing in the riff. So that already sounds nice and melodic, but of course we want to take this to the next level now. For the next level I don't have to change anything about the notes that I just played, I just have to add another note. The obvious choice is going for 7th arpeggios now. So I'm adding a minor 7th to the minor arpeggios, a major 7th to the major arpeggio and a minor 7th to the minor 7 flat 5 or half diminished arpeggio. So this is the basic minor triad arpeggio for the B flat minor chord, root, minor third, perfect fifth. And to get the minor 7th arpeggio, I'm just adding the minor 7th, root, minor 3rd, perfect 5th, minor 7th. Then I do the same thing for the C minor 7 flat 5 chord. Here I'm playing root, minor 3rd, the flattened or diminished 5th, and the minor 7th on top. Then I'm moving to the D flat major 7 chord, root, major 3rd, perfect 5th, major 7th. And then I'm using the familiar shape, the one that we started out with for the E flat minor chord. Root, minor third, perfect fifth, and the minor seventh on top. So the seventh arpeggios immediately sound more interesting than the triad arpeggios. And the final level of this exercise is your biggest takeaway for today. This is where things get really interesting. Instead of just memorizing where to put your fingers when you're learning those big arpeggio shapes that you need for sweep picking for example, you can just move these seventh arpeggios that you already learned to the next octave. So I'm really just repeating the same notes, the same formula in the next octave, playing the root, third, fifth and seventh. And by doing that I immediately get a really cool big shape that I can potentially extend across the entire fretboard if I want to. And by visualizing arpeggios that way I also remember which notes I'm playing and that is very important. So for the B flat minor 7th arpeggio I'm just playing the root, minor 3rd, perfect 5th and minor 7th. And then I'm just thinking in octaves, so my next B flat would be right here. And then I'm just doing the exact same thing, I'm playing the root, minor 3rd, perfect fifth and the minor seventh. So this is really easy to memorize and to visualize across the neck. This big arpeggio shape is simply just starting over on the D string. Root, minor third, perfect fifth, minor seventh, root, minor third, perfect fifth, minor seventh. So when you download the tabs, get the profiles and practice backing tracks on Patreon that I made specially for you. You will just start out by playing the basic triad arpeggio for each chord in the cadence. Then you will add the seventh to each shape and then you will just repeat the shape in the next octave. And when you just do that for 5 to 10 minutes every single day in your practice routine for different cadences, you will see the entire fretboard in a completely new way and this will make improvising much, much easier. I really hope that you will include this important practice approach in your personal routine. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure to do that right now so you never miss another video lesson like that again. And of course you can leave a comment below this video in case you have any more open questions. If you would like to get this shirt that I'm wearing today that says shred, 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 shred.
You can order it in the official Teespring store for the channel. As always, I left the link in the description. Thanks a lot for tuning in today and for your continued support. I will hopefully see you again in the next video lesson. All the best and have a lot of fun working on this.